Thus far, numerical solutions to ordinary differential equations have been done using Euler's method. In this video, I'm going to present an alternative method, which is known as Hewn's method, or the midpoint method, which is an improvement to Euler's method. And to see how this works, let's start by recapping how Euler's method works, and then we'll see how we can improve upon that. So if I sketch a, a graph, Euler's method works by knowing a point. So for example, this would be our initial condition. At our initial condition, we can compute the slope because we know our ODE has the form dy dx is equal to some function x and y, and dy dx is the slope. So we use this to know the slope here, and we project that slope out to some new point at some location, let's call this x1, this x2, which is some distance h away from x1. And this would be y1 and this new value is y2. And then at y2 we compute a new slope and using y2 and this slope we compute an, an x3 and a y3. And we do this over and over again. At, at this location x3, y3 we compute a new slope which then takes us out to x4, y4. Now, if you notice, for each of these updates, we use the slope at the beginning of the, of the interval and use that to, to project outward to our new point. Now, maybe it doesn't make a lot of sense to use the slope at the beginning of the interval to update the entire, um, to do the entire step. Maybe it makes more sense if we could approximate what is the slope in the middle of the interval. So if we knew the slope here, that would be a better approximation for how the function changes over that interval, and, and that's, that's really the basis between Hewn's method. But the problem is, we know the slope at, the, at this end, and if we knew the slope at the other end, then we could calculate an average slope in the middle, but we don't know this point until after we take the step. So the idea between Hewn's method is we're going to use, the, use an Euler step to predict our new point and then update correct that, that update using a, a new slope. So let's kind of see how that works. Let me draw another figure. So here's our axes again, y and x, and we still have our same initial condition. And at that initial condition we have some slope. Let's call it S1. And we're going to use that slope to pr predict our next, our new value. So we're going to predict, use that slope and get out to here, which is our x2 location, which let's call this y2 star. And now at this location, y2 star, we can compute another slope. Uh, let me make that red. So here's our, our new slope. This is the slope S2 computed at y2 star. And then we're going to use both of these slopes to actually do the update over that region. So let me just do in blue an update that starts at the initial condition and goes out to our, ac our actual y2. And this line has slope S1 plus S2 over 2. So it's the average slope from the beginning of the interval to the end of the interval, and that's used to actually do the update. So S2 star is our predictor step, S2 is our actual update, and that is Hewn's method. And then we're going to do that over and over again. So for example, so now we're at, at uh, X2, Y2, and at Y2 we're going to compute our new predictor step. So at y2 we're going to compute a slope, whatever that slope might look like. Maybe it, uh, our function looks like this here. With that we're going to predict what our y3 value is, so y3 star. 
at that location, we're going to compute a new slope, which maybe looks like this. So this is going to be our new slope. And then the average of those two slopes is going to use to do the actual update, which is going to be the average of a fairly horizontal line and a steep line, which maybe looks something like this. So this is our actual y3. And we keep doing that over and over again. And that's Hewitt's method. And we can write that down a little bit more formally. I'll say that uh, Hewn's method has the update. So we're, we're, we're going to solve the differential equation dy dx is equal to some function of x and y. And we're going to have the update, some new y value, so y i plus 1 star is equal to yi plus our slope evaluated at xi yi times our step size h. That's our predicted value. And then we're going to compute our actual value, y i plus 1, which is yi, our old value, plus 1 half the slope evaluated at the beginning of the interval at xi, yi, and half the and the slope evaluated at the end of the interval, which is going to be x i plus one, comma y i plus one star, and all that gets multiplied by our step size h. So that is Hume's method. It's a two-step method. So this first step is known as the predictor step. And the second step is known as the corrector step. And that, th those names come from the predictor step predicts the value of y i plus 1 star. And then the corrector step corrects that value using a slope that's computed at the beginning of the interval and a slope at the end of the interval. So this is the slope at the beginning, and this is the slope at the end of the interval. And you put that together and you get Hewn's method. Now when we did the error analysis for Euler's method, we said that Euler's method was a first order method. You'll find out that this is a, a second order method. So this is a second order method which means that the error, let's say E, is proportional to the step size squared. So if you reduce the step size by a factor of two, the error actually goes down by a factor of four when you use Hume's method, which um, we're gonna, you'll find out that that uh, means that this method is more computationally efficient than Euler's method. Um, so for the same computational cost, you can get to a, a lower error. Um, in the next video, I'll show you an example where we use Hume's method and uh, find the solution to a differential equation.